and through all its parts are many. I'm sorry, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. So it is with Christ, for we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. Now, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not the eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that re reason cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body that could be, God has orchestrated, almost like a, um, a designer would go in a home and an architect would lay out a building. God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. And keep in mind that Paul was fighting against present discord because different people had classified different gifts in such a way that some were premier and some were not necessary. Some have said, ah, so he uses the picture of a body. We could use the picture of a football team since it's football season, right? If I said everybody on the football team, you know, should weigh 300 pounds uh, because they could stop anybody, that would make for a poor wide receiver. If I said if everybody on the football team should be six foot five and have great hands, that person would make a poor center. And I don't know if you watch football, but if you've been watching UVA football, you recognize how serious it is to have a good line. I mean, you, you have to have the offense, you have to have it. So we all need our parts and pieces. We all need to be where we need to be. And we're all, great, good to see you, Reverend Paul. We're all absolutely necessary for the body, okay? That was what Paul was saying. So we've looked at gifts. Can you tell me any of the gifts that are named? And again, this list is not comprehensive, right? But it gives some, some gifts that are used within the body. Can you give me any of the, those that we have used? Let me give you the categories. Remember, we have three buckets or three categories. And we're not saying that some are better than the other. In fact, we're saying the opposite. We're saying just like you need a pilot, you need a mechanic. Remember that? Remember we had that argument, that conversation? And if you're getting on a plane, you don't decide whether you want a, a better pilot than you want a mechanic or an average pilot and a great mechanic. No, you want them both to be superb. So it is with the gifts. The three categories on this, you remember them? You have... Speaking gifts, and those would be evangelism, encouragement, uh, exhortation, or another word for exhortation. Reverend Paul, you do this. Uh, another word for exhortation is encouragement, okay? And preaching falls under exhortation. And so, so we have speaking, then we have what else? Serving gifts. And that's the category that we're on now. So we've only talked about three. We talked, you remember what those three are? David had the gift of leadership. He could stand before people and persuade them. He had character. He had courage. He had competence, right? And he was able to, to lead. But then there's another one. And remember, this is one uh, that, that the biblical term is different, but I use the word like a wedding organizer, that administration. Now, now amen. Now, some of us don't have those gifts, and that's okay in Jesus' name. Right? Administration. That's the person who makes sure that everything is in place because without them, things would be a hot mess. Now, I was thinking about this recently, and I was thinking about when you go to the hospital. The gift that we're going to look at today is the gift of the nurse. We're looking at the nurse today, right? And nurses, I mean, a nurse is, in my opinion, most of the time better than a doctor. Nurses are amazing. But you know who the person I never think about when I go to the hospital? We're, not gonna, we talk about the, we're gonna talk about the nurse today. The person who I don't think about is the person who makes sure the hospital stays open. I mean, they're pushing those papers. They're making sure the insurance is covered. They're making sure that the libel cases, not the libel cases, but the court cases don't go too far, you know, all those hard and difficult things. Those people are really, really, really serious because if you don't have somebody making sure that hospital stays open, those nurses won't be there, right? 
So, so those are different things. So we said administration, right? There's one other category that we didn't mention. We didn't mention speaking. We mentioned serving. And this we haven't gotten to yet. Think charismatic. Think ch ch uh, charisma. Signs. The signs. Now the signs, signs and wonders. In fact, that's what the Bible refers to them. The signs are very powerful, and we'll talk about that when we get to them. But some of the signs would be healers, speaking in tongues. And I'll talk about that when we get to it while we put it there. And miracles, signs and wonders. And that is a gift, right? Amen and praise God. All right, so on tonight, we get the privilege of looking at serving gifts. That's a category. And we've looked at leaders or leadership. We've looked at ad administration. And on tonight, we are looking, or we, we also looked at discernment. I forgot to mention that. You remember what we said discernment was? Another word for discernment is Come on now, y'all, y'all, somebody in here. Okay. Now, remember we said it, it is recognizing, but it's, it, the reason we use this particular word is because oftentimes when you think about uh, how we know things, we oftentimes use particular senses. So we can say, it, it, it's hard. We can say, it's hot. We can say, it's dark, it's light, and we use our, our sight. We can say, it, it, it smells, you know. But this sense is not external. So the word that we use for discernment was, Amen. The purpose of discernment is to bless his people and to protect his people, right? So, so somebody might say to me here, I don't think it's a good idea for you to spend so much time at, at World of Beer or Beer World. I don't know what it's called. Pastor, I, 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 and, I, and they won't even give me reasons why necessarily. The word we used was perceive, and that's the word that was oftentimes used in Scripture. Amen. They said, I perceive this. I, I, I sense this. And it's not that it's illogical, because it's not necessarily illogical, but it's that it's illogical on occasion. That I may not be able to give you a list of ten reasons why, but I know, I know, she is not the one for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She might have that curve, but she is not the one for you. Amen. Okay, let's go ahead. All right, okay. And so on tonight, we move from discernment to this wonderful gift called mercy. And, and because mercy is something that's not uncommon, I assume that on tonight we're going to deal with mercy, the gift of mercy, and the, and the gift of giving. But we won't have time to get to the gift of giving, so I'm not even going to pretend to, to go to the gift. We're just going to look at the gift of mercy. And to do that, I want to start off by showing how this is such an absolute characteristic of God himself. Now, all the characteristics or gifts are characteristics are of God, but I want to see how mercy is part and parcel of who God is. Mercy is part and parcel of who God is. Would somebody turn to Psalm 103? Would someone else turn to? Who's turning to Psalm 103? Amen. Thank you, Sister Fisher. Would someone else turn to Matthew chapter 18, verse 33? Thank you, Sister Ayers. And lastly, would someone turn to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 6? Amen. Thank you, Reverend Paul. Amen. 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 Now, as we look at this, I just want to let you know, uh, the Greek word for mercy is aleo, right? And it has to do with patience, compassion, long-suffering, and kindness. Amen. Mercy. That's what mercy is. Amen. And it is part and parcel of the characteristic of, of God, who God is. Psalm 103. Would someone read that and read it like you were mad at me, like you were absolutely mad at me, like you were yelling at me across the room? Diseases. Redeems your life from destruction. Amen. Crowns you with tender kindness. Amen. He will not always chide, neither will he keep us angry. Come on. Ever. Amen. He has not dealt with us after our sins. Amen. Rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. Amen. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. 
Hallelujah. Everlasting. Right now. Now, come on. Hey, that's one of my favorite verses. And I want to let you know that in writing that verse, I was thinking of another verse. Yeah. That's a wonderful definition of God's mercy. And the one that I was actually thinking of, I love that definition because it walks through. Uh, I will tell you a joke, but it's probably not good to tell now. Uh, but it simply talks about, in the King James, it says that, that we are but dirt. Uh, uh, so we are, we are actually but dust, you know. Uh, but check this out. This is not one, Psalm 103, but it's Psalm 136. Check this out. It says, Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights, for his mercy. And it goes on and on. A litany of what God did, simply saying his mercy endureth forever. Because everything that God does is an act of his mercy. All right? Because we even know why he's paid for it. Right? Amen. So God's key characteristics could be summarized with the word mercy. The next verse, Matthew chapter 18, 33. Amen. And we know the story there. We know the story there. Someone received great mercy. They received mercy that was so tremendous in comparison to what was due them, right, in comparison to what they should have sold someone else, that it's laughable. I mean, they got $5 million and somebody else owed them $5. And that's the, the, the message from God, from Christ, to, to show us how much mercy should be extended toward others, right, because of the mercy that was extended Toward us. Now, Ephesians, Reverend Paul, would you read Ephesians chapter 2, 4, and 6? No, that no man can boast. That's our mercy. Hmm. Amen. So we've acknowledged the simple fact that God is absolutely full of mercy. And a key characteristic of God is his mercy. Now, here's the hard part that we have to accept, that although we all as Christians should have a heart of mercy, we all should grow in mercy. We all should try to develop the, the, the gift of mercy. The reality is just like administration, just like leadership, just like uh, teaching, just like encouragement, just like uh, exhortation or preaching, there are some who have a greater gift of mercy. And so what we want to emphasize tonight is the particular gift, and we'll look at some examples of that, but we want to look at the particular gift. But here's the good news. We all want to develop that strength. We all want to develop that mentality. We all want to develop that spirit, that anointing 
of mercy, right? And here's one of the reasons which I hadn't talked about before, but I want to share just a little bit. One of the reasons we want to consider what the biblical gifts are and how they look is it will help us to understand other people. We will deal with other people when we understand. We will understand the reason they do what they do is because their gift is administration, right? And their gift is not encouragement, right? So you won't go to the person, you, you, you won't go to Paul to get encouragement because he's going to give you some correction, you know. You won't go to Barnab- Barnabas to get correction. You're going to go to him to get encouragement, you know, because though we all are members, we all physicians in one sense, you go to your podiatrist when you have a foot problem, and you go to your optometr- optometrist when you, have a, when you have an eye problem. That's right. You know? And so it's important that we recognize, and we'll relate better. We'll understand each other better. You'll love me more, I'll love you more, because I'll, I'll know that's who you are. That's who God has made you, and we need each other. Amen. And it also lets us know that we can't make it on our own. Here's someone who had a gift of mercy. I don't know if you'll recognize this, this person, but I'm going to read a couple of their quotes, and hopefully uh, their name will come to your heart. She said this, if we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. Next quote, if you can't feed 100 people, then feed just one. Last quote, we think sometimes that poverty is the only, that poverty is only being hungry naked and homeless. The poverty of being unwanted, unloved, and uncared for is the greatest poverty. We must start in our own homes to remedy this kind of poverty. Now, who said that? Mother Teresa. Now, when we think of Mother Teresa, we don't think of her as a great speaker. No, I don't. No, we don't think of her as a a healer. No, I I don't. We, We don't think, we think of her what? Compassion. We, we think of a person who is full of compassion. And that is because one of her primary gifts, and not her only gifts, she also had the gift of administration. She built a wonderful team of nurses, or, of nuns who did nursing. But her primary gift was compassion. And so it is with a lot of people that we're going, we are going to encounter. And we're going to look at some of their characteristics. In fact, let's dive right in. Now, one of the persons who is noted for having a gift of mercy or compassion, and another word for mercy would be compassion, would be the Apostle John. When most persons read his writings, they recognize that he tends to write with the lens, not of liberation or not of uh, deep doctrine, although there's deep doctrine there, but it's primarily a book all about, all about love. Let us love one another. And so, and so John uses the phrase one another all the time because he's always talking about how we deal with one another and love and love and love. Okay, let's check this out. The gift of mercy has a number of qualities. I want to look at four on tonight. Okay? The first one, you'll see number, number one on the near bottom of your page. But the first one, we're going to simply call... Oh, you didn't get a handout? There are some extra in the back. I'm sorry. My bad. Hey, check it out. So under number one, and I won't go too fast, you just put this in, is empathy. Empathy. Amen. There's another handout that's needed. Thank you very much. Empathy, and we're all very familiar with empathy. You know, there are some people who naturally, who innately, when they see other people crying, they start crying. Is anybody here who cry at somebody's funeral who they don't know? That, that's probably because you have the gift, the gift of empathy. Now, just for the record, empathy uh, takes a lot of energy. People with energy, people with empathy literally are going through the experience of somebody else. They empathize. You know, a good husband, when his wife is pregnant, is going to gain some weight. Really? And have some pains. Really? Because he has empathy. He might get morning sickness too. They have to share that. Move over. (laughs) Empathy is the nature of joining in someone else's experience. When you have the gift of 